just, just as we start, we, knew, we lose Kyoto on the sky, which is inevitably going to happen. Okay, one second. Hopefully she'll, she'll come back in the mid, mid uh, performance here.
So we wanted to take karaoke and push it into strange spaces that it, that it, that it wasn't usually, um, it didn't usually inhabit. And Meanwhile seemed like a good opportunity for this. So we basically set up a relationship with Meanwhile and as they've moved from one shop to another in London, we've gone with them and we've done this glitch karaoke event in different spaces. So this was the first space, which was a weird basement and it was, it was like this horrible <coughs> fire trap. I don't know what it had originally been, but it's just some storage space. And we, um, we turned the, uh, the fire trap into a lovely uh, hole of, of uh, joy and karaoke and singing. And our first event, we, um, we connected up with Japan. We did this as a fundraiser. Um, it was just at the time that the earthquake happened in Japan. So this is Glitch Karaoke from our end. And um, <coughs> this is Glitch Karaoke from the Japan end. Um, from our end, there were these people on this big screen, you know, their faces are there on the webcam, we're singing, we're, we're sharing, we're, we're singing songs over, over Skype. And from their end, there were just two laptops on the floor of uh, some friend's apartment. So, like, again, again this, is, this is exactly what Pivot's Karaoke is about. It's kind of, um, hopefully, taking one space and kind of transforming it, it, it through the web into some completely disparate space. We're kind of mismatching things. Okay. So other events we've done. This is the same one in, um, in London, in the basement. This is another event uh, from Korea. We used the same space. And this is from Q was in Korea. We also did a, uh, a glitch barbecue. <laughs> this is my back garden. And you can see this little webcam here is perched up on my fence at the top of uh, Looking down onto the garden, um, the neighbours weren't too pleased about this one. Uh, and this is our most recent event where we linked up um, another meanwhile space in North London uh, with a, an event in Liverpool. Um, and you can see this is a screenshot from their perspective looking into Liverpool. Um, with this event, another thing about meanwhile is because they're moving around all the time, they don't have a permanent web connection. So we have to make do with whatever we've got and they have a 3G router and uh, we've used that in the past squeezing the bandwidth through. But at this space what we did is we had one computer connected up to a 3G router and another one connected up to a cafe which is across a, a main double road and, and the, the cafe had left the Wi-Fi on overnight. So we went in there, bought a coffee, got the Wi-Fi code and, and casually went away. Yeah, so we, we, like the bandwidth was so tiny, but we managed to squeeze through these two streams <coughs> and um, and collaborate and sing. This is our um, the back end of our setup in, in London, and uh, the people in Liverpool really took this to a new level. They had a um, I can't remember what you, I don't know what you call it, but they could put live text on the projection screen by feeding it through some snazzy 1980s box. And this created some really crazy glitches because we've got kind of the analogue and the, and the webcam and the, all these different feeds kind of mushing together. Uh, and they were, they were, they were, uh, they, they were uh, as you can see what he's singing, they were kind of typing these, the names of the songs and what people were singing on top as it was going along. So created this, this haze of uh, different references. And lastly, um, this was us Skyping into Glitch 2011 in Chicago, which is two weeks ago. So uh, this is the, you, know, you guys basically in, in Chicago, and uh, here's myself and Kim, and we had some random people that were looking in and, and joining us. So we found that, we found that there's a piece of software called TinyChat, you can just go into your browser, load up, and, and suddenly you've got a room full of people on webcams. And we've also been using um, Google Hangouts, um, part of Google Plus. The benefit of this is you, people come into the same hangout and you can load your um, karaoke video from YouTube. And if one person presses pause, it pauses the video at all locations, like more or less simultaneously. <coughs> Someone presses play, it plays more or less simultaneously. Obviously you get delays. Um, and double delays and triple delays and echo, but that's kind of part of the fun. We wanted to try something to 
today and it's not going to happen because tiny chats fail those. There's also a tiny chat app you can get on your iPhone. Um, our idea was to get you guys to put this on your iPhones and you can kind of hook in. <laughs> After some of the conversations I had at Clip Amsterdam, um, <coughs> the idea of kind of two people with their tiny chat apps um, putting the speaker to the to the um, to the microphone and creating feedback and kind of really playing into the sounds directly in the room was really appealing. But we're not going to be able to do that today, which is a real shame. Um, I'm just going to see if I can get Kyung on now. She was going to talk some. I think she's here. Hey. Hey, hey Kyung. Yeah, uh, I have one today on a different computer. If you want to log in. Um, maybe, maybe we'll just stick like this if that's all right. And yeah, that's cool. I can bring up your PDF and then you can talk. And we can just about see you in the bottom. <laughs> that's fine. Okay, I'm just loading the PDF up and tell me when to scroll. Okay. Just let me know when it's up. Okay, we're up to page one. Great. It's strange because I can't see you guys, but I can hear myself really well, so it sounds like I'm talking to myself. I'll put the webcam on. There we go. Okay, go for it, Kim. Okay, so look. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about um, the fact that I am doing this with Daniel, the back of me, but our interest um, comes yeah, we, from we, we, we different things. We need to talk into the mic. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess to give you some context of what I'm about to present. I'm concurrently working on an art practice research um, PhD that's looking at contemporary then morning, not as in 8 a.m. Um, so Glitch Karaoke offered me a much needed, fun, infused way of looking at some of the same concepts that I've been looking at in that research. Um, specifically, you know, ways of looking of a weak and dialectical exploration of failure, mistake, maintenance, potentiality, exposure, and all these as the problems. Um, so the way I'm going to sort of go through this with you is I was reading the Glitch Reader, and unfortunately I haven't been able to attend in person, uh, physically, um, any of the conferences, but I figured by you know watching your new stream and reading your literature, it still taps me into what's been going on. So I'm going to focus here on the philosophy and language of glitch and how and why it might serve as a way to articulate contemporary Western conditions of the social um, communities and the individual, and specifically to the Glitch Karaoke project. So if you scroll to the next slide. So this says, regardless of what analog or digital systems are used to massage a glitch, it's still ultimately has to run on human wetware. Could you develop a system or make a work of art that causes human wetware itself to glitch? This is from the reader, and if I butcher people's name, I totally apologize. But, um, in the article by only. And the 
maybe also the notion of glitches that, in terms of talking about technological error and digital error, um, has developed a language that I think really can um, bridge the conversation about social engagement, which still, I think, is predicated on these notions of right or wrong or our ethics. Um, so it articulates these relational aesthetic and racematic concepts, which have, can be really heavy in a very applicable way. And now I think it's, it's come to this point where we can really take that language and apply it as they adhere the web. So the people, when we, when in Glitch Creative, when we're talking about it, it's not just Daniel and myself or the participants in the room, but we consider everyone who's involved in it, whether you can see them or not, as really integral to this project. So those who make the hardware, the software, the YouTube videos, and upload them, um, you guys and the audience, and as we continue to imagine this, anyone who plays with the delays, who don't even talk, talk to us about it, um, and develop more just beyond even our own imaginations. Um, so the next slide says, a festival even one about glitches cannot exist without expectations and playable frameworks. Um, and this is from Rosa Mankman's and Iman Radi's um, article in the Glitch Reader. Um, so basically, you know, I think this is really good in articulating the fact that with Glitch Karaoke, we did start with frameworks and a really clear concept that we're like, one day we want to have like this 24-hour Glitch Karaoke event, or quote-unquote non-event. Um, and there's this notion that creation comes from nothing. But again, the Glitch Karaoke and aesthetics is really talking about making do, seeing what you have, and using the um, what, what things were intended for as um, sites of creation. And engagement. So we know that we have, it, one of the interesting things I think about this project is that it really speaks to and makes us rethink our own um, preconceived notions. So, you know, Daniel and I are, we're both writers and researchers and artists, but even with this project, when we came with this notion of karaoke, we came with this notion of what the software is used for, a lot of times the conversation always started with, well, what are the right conditions for something? Or uh, whether it's late at night, like the karaoke it's late at night, a lot of people, a lot of alcohol. But if you have it in different time zones, you really have to rethink and disrupt that. And so it calls attention to the fact that we, even when we consider ourselves really innovative, we have to, we start off with sort of in-the-box thinking before we can um, extend outside of it. So the next one is glitch is a system with and within ourselves which we can do, learn to love and their infinite philosophical returns is included in perfections we once tried to abandon but now integrate. And that's by John Cates in the reader. Um, I mean simply we're just trying we're trying to practice glitch and glitch really glitch aesthetics I think really is a philosophy that has a lot of potential in terms of rethinking problem solving. Um, and rethinking problem solving outside of specialist communities. But in order to do that, in order to extend it um, outside of people who are extremely technologically and programmatically savvy, um, the question is, well, how do we do this? So that leads to the next slide, and it brings us into Nick Britz's um, essay on glitch art histories, in which he writes, glitch art, like pop art, is an amorphous term, the canopy whose tenants lift under and out of these terms can be expanded to include much more than might immediately come to mind. This is because at their core, they're simply a loose link to a key concept, the interest in the mistake, the interest in popular culture. And this essay is really interesting because it does really bring in um, the question of popular culture um, as a glitch, as a related phenomenon. And you know, in terms of why we chose karaoke, there are, there are a number of them, but one of them is that when we were thinking about karaoke, we weren't thinking about dumbing down, we were thinking of popular art, popular culture, um, derisively, or thinking, oh, here's, here's this project, we're going to bring it to the masses. But um, quite the opposite, you know, it's bringing um, in social engagement, popular culture, uh, as non complex networks that really require our attention and study and exploration. So, you know, 
obviously we chose it because it was also fun, but it's also because there is an apolitical space, you know, it's not like it literally comes with an agenda. But what that also we engage with everyone willing to engage with us as knowledgeable and um, very important constituents in, in this project. Um, and it also allows for us to see that you know, political phenomenons aren't necessarily adhered to one or another or multiple set of agendas that people really come in um, that are articulated. And that also then leads to this, this next quote by Rosa Benkman, um, where she writes, in the end, the glitch is a subjective phenomenon. There is no unequivocal cultural definition of glitch, as there is none for noise. Because in the end, what glitch is and what glitch is not is a subjective matter. Further, as a subgenre that participates in larger media cultures and dist distributed authorship, the subjective experience of glitch is paradoxically carried by many, which makes glitch theory difficult to practice, accessible to many, contestable, and necessary. So this is really interesting because I think what happens with glitch aesthetics is that um, it really disrupts the notion of what subjectivity is. It disrupts um, the notion of private and public. And you see that with karaoke because we, we set up a number of different spaces. And we do that on purpose in terms of we want to see what happens when you hook up two house parties. Or like even now, I hear a lot talking a lot of quotes. And you guys in the conference room um, very much in a social space. But this, uh, the, the technological possibilities are where we can engage in this way it really makes us rethink um, this notion of being public versus private, subjectivity versus objectivity, and what, what these, what these um, terms mean. So I think this it also brings in like an oblique understanding of identity and in turn a space for creativity that is both social and aesthetic. Shall we move Next. shall we move on and, uh, and try and get to some performative things, Kiona? How, how many more quotes are there? Oh there's just one, uh, two more. Sorry, am I taking too long? Well let, just just maybe a couple more minutes and then we'll move on I think. Okay, I mean this is it. Uh, the next one is, is all forms of sorting require the use of resources. I guess I'll just let you guys read it. Um, but basically, this quote from Matthew Fuller is about time and about this idea of sacrificing resources, especially time, for this rather obscure um, end. And with Glitch, we, I guess our obscure end would be to have 24 hour karaoke, but really, there is no particular end that we're doing. Um, we're sort of figuring out as we go along. And I think that's what's really exciting about um, glitch aesthetics is that it disrupts the idea of outcomes. And then the final one is just another quotation from Yaman Murat, which is that glitch is not only young and all right, there is an invented, beautiful community that is formed around discussing glitch, creating works. A charge that can't be levied against it is that it's stagnant and not evolving, it is evolving, it does have its critics view. I hope they don't. So likewise, um, for us, with this project, we're really hoping that um, to further engage with people, and if you guys are interested in this project, more than happy, or if you have a lot of criticisms, more than happy to um, engage with you. So that's really it. Okay, in a minute we're going to take Kim from her, um, her lecture-based um, identity and make her sing at us through the webcam. So we're going to have a grand shift here. Um, <laughs> Maybe I want to just talk slightly, uh, lastly, about a, a, another real-world project that um, acts as a kind of um, model for us. Um, so the, the glitch is a kind of technical um, term. Uh, something, maybe a visual glitch, exposes the, the, the error that's happening within the, the, the technical uh, um, situation or within the stream and the network. But, um, there's some art projects that, like we've seen today already, that, that also use error and glitch as a kind of real-world manifestation. Um, this is a project by uh, an artist called Jeremy Hutchinson, um, called Air. And basically, he um, contacted lots of factories all around the world that produced mass-produced objects. And he sent them a letter saying, I would like you, the boss of the factory, to pick any worker in your factory who makes these, these objects every single day. 
And what I want you to do is I want you to allow that worker to uh, let an error seep into the making or to introduce an error into the, the object. And I will buy any object that they make, whatever the error is. All right? So he did this in China, in um, Eastern Europe, in factories in America or India, all sorts of different kinds of people making different kinds of mass-produced objects for the worldwide marketing. And he received back a whole uh, range of different objects. This one at the top is quite a simple error. Um, the, the factory worker obviously just took their anger out on the chair that they made. <laughs> so they just taken a chair, a finished chair, smashed it to smithereens, sent that to him and he's bought it. This one at the bottom is uh, kind of a... a, a I'm going to put the 
I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> Um, we, 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 st we spent a lot of time deciding what song we were going to sing. Like, it's quite a big decision actually. When you've done this a few times you realise some songs work. Some songs work be better when it's me in a basement in Kyung in Korea. Other songs work better when you've got a group of glitch artists in Chicago and five people in five bedrooms. Different songs work. So I think we're going to kind of offer two up today. The first one was Frank Sinatra, My Way. Nice simple song everyone can sing. The other one was Rick Astley, Never Been in New York. I thought that would, uh, would, would, would win, but Kyo wasn't too happy about singing Rick Astley down the road. No. So um, I think we'll go. Is it alright, Kyo, if we go for Rick Astley? You just pushed the
There's no way we could disguise secretly. Oh, I can show you my sound in here. Bye.